So the other day, I realized that I had started talking about Microsoft lists in some of my videos, but I never actually showed you how to create the list. So we're gonna solve that problem today and take a look at how to create a list from scratch. So let's jump on the computer and see how it's done. The first thing we're gonna do is navigate to office.com and you will have to log in using your credentials. Once you're there, the Lists app may be in the left-hand navigation rail for you, but if it's not, go to All Apps at the bottom left-hand corner, and you will find Lists under the Office 365 apps. On the Lists homepage, you will see all of the lists that you have created that is tied to the account you're signed in with. I'm in a demonstration account and therefore I only have the vacation approval list that I used in the Power Automate video. If you're interested in watching that video, there will be a link in the description below this one. Let's quickly orient ourselves to the home page. When you first get here, there are two filters and by default, they both are selected to recent lists. This first one on the left hand side, you can switch to my lists. And the other one on the right hand side of the screen, you can switch it from all lists to recent lists I created. This can be extremely useful when you start having several lists on your page. Another thing that will make it easier for you when you begin using multiple lists is if you hover over the card for any particular list, you will see this star. When you click on it, it makes the list a favorite and it will pop it to the top of the screen so that you can quickly find the list that you use most often. Now let's take a look at how to create a brand new list. Navigate to the new list button in the top middle of the screen. Another dialog box will open and you will see some options. You can create a list from blank, you can import some data from Excel, or you can create a list from an existing list. The benefit of this choice is you can use an existing list that someone else created as a template instead of starting from scratch. You can also use one of the templates that Microsoft has provided. We're just gonna go ahead and click on the issue tracker one. And what you see in the center of the screen is an example of the type of data that is included with the template. And as I scroll over, you can see all of the different columns that are available. If this one doesn't quite fit your needs, you can click through all of the different templates and see if any of them fit what you are looking to use them for. For this scenario, none of the templates work, so we're going to click cancel and then pull up a blank list. I'll go back to new lists and I'm gonna create it from blank. Now I will get another dialog box and I can give the list a name. You don't have to put a description, but it is useful to help people understand why they should use this list and the type of information contained. From there, you can choose a color and an icon, and this doesn't have any impact on the list whatsoever. All it really does is give you a visual for the card so that you can distinguish one list from the other. The important thing to point out is that when you create a list from the standalone app, it will default to my lists, meaning that you will be the only one who can see this list. If you need to share it with other people, you will want to click the drop down arrow and select one of your teams or SharePoint sites as appropriate. For this example, I'm gonna say that I want to have this list shared with everybody on my testing team. So I'm going to select that and then click on Create. And now we have our standard list with the basic title column. To rename it, click on Title, Column Settings, and Rename. And then I might want to call this Content Title. And then click Save. And now I can begin adding the additional columns that I need for this project. I'm going to click the drop down arrow next to add a column so that you can see all of the choices that you have. And here are some important things to keep in mind. If you use single line of text, you are limited to 255 characters. If you want more information than that, use multiple lines of text. 
The location option will pull information from Microsoft Bing for the location and your organization may or may not have disabled this ability. The person column searches your organization's global address list or GAL so that you can find a specific person to assign a task to. This is what I used in the Power Automate flow so that I could pull in an email address. And for this demonstration, the hyperlink column is going to be useful because I am going to insert a link for different documents to keep track of where all of my training materials are. Now I'm going to go through the process of adding several columns to the list. The name is required, but I suggest you also enter a description so that other people using the list will know what to enter in each column. For this list, I'm going to use two different choice columns, and the benefit of using the choice column is that you can specify what type of information will go in this column. So for example, the first choice column is for the status, and I have three statuses that are approved for the life cycle of our documents. The color coding of the choice pills is nice because it gives you a quick visual indicator of the status. The other choice column is going to be for the type of training materials that are being created. I'm sticking with the standard three choices for this video, but if you have more than three choices you need, all you have to do is click the add choice button and continue building different options. The last column I'm going to add is a hyperlink column. As I mentioned before, this allows me to quickly find the different documents that I'm working on, regardless of where they are posted. Now I'm going to click on new in the upper left-hand corner and enter one row of data. As always with all of my training videos, this is just an example of how you might use this particular tool. You can enter any information that you choose into your list and keep track of it in any way that makes sense for your business process. And now we have one line of data on our list so that you can see what it looks like with the color-coded choice pillows and the hyperlink. So if I click on this link, it's going to take me to stream and make it much easier to find my materials. And to get back to the lists homepage, click the words Microsoft Lists in the upper left-hand corner, and now you can quickly switch between your different lists. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.